Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday, 17th of February. It's about uh, 8 o'clock or so, 8.15. Back over here for a little bit. Uh, then I got to run, and then I'll be back to uh, fix the gaps. That's my concentration again for today. If I get to welding in the sills, great. Uh, that'll all be gravy. It's my video, my last video. <clears throat> I uh, at least came through a lot of the problems over on the driver's side over here. I'm going to throw up the passenger side door as well today and look at that side and see how that fits up. I got the clips for the uh, catches. They're uh, in a bag over there. I'll bolt those in real quick to help me size this thing up. I got some more adjustments to do. But again, that's the focus for today. Um, so really, that's it. So hopefully, crossing my fingers, I might get a sill, a sill in there, but we'll see. So no hurry. I'm gonna try to do the job right. Uh, I would like to find out what's really going on here. I'm not so sure that I've uh, figured it out, but we'll see. So. Um, there we are, and we'll see how it goes. All right, I got the uh, uh, capture clips or whatever the heck they're called in there on both sides, and I've got the door up on the passenger side, as you can see that. Um, not adjusted quite as well as I got the driver's side in, which is interesting since this is the side I didn't have any problems with. It kind of flares out at the bottom. That doesn't seem to be coming into agreement. Anyway, uh, I'm going to lower the bonnet here and take a look at the gap. I have a feeling that it's going to be pretty good, but, uh, but you'll watch it with me. So here we go. Sorry about the angle. I don't have any room um, to, the right of the, to the right of me here in the garage because the car is kind of closer to this wall. And all the other crap that's in here is in the way. So hold on a second, see what we got. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, even even a little um, tight. So this still flares out. I don't know if this can be adjusted or not, or if this is bent here. I don't know if I can, I gotta look at that clip, but you can see when I press in to make it flush, this kind of bows out, so I'm not sure what I can do, if anything, about that. Um, so that, that's pretty good. That gets a, even a little skinny in here, which would tell me that I need to um, change the height again uh, on this side as well. So, not too bad. One thing I did find uh, that's a little concerning for me, I'm gonna move the camera here is if you look here that top bolt there is where your height adjustment is you can see that one that's right in the middle um, which tells me that well it doesn't really tell me anything just I have adjustment both ways but if you look at the other side where I do need to go up a little bit you can see that I'm almost completely at the top so something's crooked somewhere I don't know what it is and I'm not sure how to adjust that but something is definitely not uh, set right. So the body may be not level uh, on the mounts, right? Because I because the, the body gets mounted and there's spacers in between, so maybe vertically the body's not right, which would argue that the frame's twisted. I, there's just so many variables here that it's it hurts your head to kind of think about it. So um, I'll continue to play with it a little bit, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, everybody, it's about 11 o'clock. Back from picking the boy up from basketball practice. Um, so what I did was got the, bo the body bolted down and the bolt holes aligned, uh, including the one that I lost the captive nut on. And uh, so everything is pretty tight. The body's definitely not going to move. Uh, and then I'm kind of trying to do the final alignment here. So... Um, Again, it seems like every time I go to do something, I discover some other, you know, great idea that, hey, I should do this, and then I should do this. So I was adjusting the bonnet, and the body was able to slide around a little bit, so I figured that was kind of a bad idea. So anyway, I got that hammered down. So if you look, this gap is a little bit wide, um, not horrible. I, I would like to move that up a little bit, but you'll notice that it gets a little skinnier at the top. It's very, pretty subtle uh, than at the bottom. And then down here is, is terrible, but we'll come across that bridge when we come to it. Um, and on the other side, 
kind of the same thing. It's a little bit fatter at the top than it is at the bottom. So what that says is that the top adjustment um, needs to come down. So there's two ways to do that. You have the cones in here, which you can loosen up and, and wind into the bonnet more, and that'll drop it down. But it's, it's pretty close to being level here, but not exact, so I'm going to adjust that. But then you also adjust the front, like I think I've already talked about, um, and that'll cause that rear end to pivot. And if you read the particular portion of the, of the workshop manual here, in that horizontal and height adjustment, that's essentially what that says. Um, so loosen everything up, do the horizontal, and then tighten them, and then uh, raise the bonnet to, to get the parallel gap between the, the vertical and the door. So that's what I'm on now, and uh, continue on. All right, so I didn't have a um, collar in the one bolt on the on the passenger side uh, hinge bracket so I decided to take it apart put that collar in there I misplaced it but I found it um, and I figured once it was while I was out I might as well fix that dent that's in there if you remember that big huge uh, thing there hopefully you can see that that big huge thing so I'm going to try to take care of that by using the press here and I'm not incredibly positive that's going to work um, but we'll see because it's I'm afraid it's going to kind of start to go like this, but we'll see what happens here. All right, well, I should have gotten a little bit out of it. Yep. All right, so that's better, definitely. Um, I think that's better enough that I'm going to try this little flat guy here. See if I can get it to stop lifting up on me. Spread the, spread the force out a little bit maybe. That'll stop it from lifting up. Let's see. Alright, that's probably good, or at least good enough. Interesting sound. Yep, so not perfect, but uh, get that shot better for you there. Not perfect, but definitely a lot better. So, um, alright, we'll get this back in there and do final adjustments. Alright, it's about noon. And I think I've got my gaps. Um, so there's this one over here. Taking the drill bit that scrapes along a little bit. Obviously uh, right here it's, it gets a little skinny. Um, but it kind of opens back up a little bit. Especially towards the bottom there. So I don't think that's a vertical thing. Um, across the top looks good. The only thing I don't quite get. And it's probably bowed. You can see that I think in that shot. I'm not sure. But the bonnet sticks up above the uh, the sail plate there, the scuttle, as the tech manual refers to it, um, as it goes goes across, which would kind of lead me to believe that the thing is scrunched together, kind of pushing up in the center. But I don't really know. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it now. Um, here's the gaps on this side, just about five millimeters all the way down there, and then. Uh, the gap here on the sill obviously is is too wide, but not on the um, bonnet. So I'll have to play with that a little bit and go from there on that. Uh, but otherwise, I'm I'm happy with with what I've got. So now I'm going to put the sills up, put the car back on the uh, the dollies so I can move it around a little bit. Put the sills up. Um, the other thing that I'm not sure if I should be concerned with or not because I don't know what it really would have looked like coming out of the factory. Uh, but we're obviously crooked somewhere. If you can look and see, that's the angle on that hinge there. This is the driver's side. And if you come over here and look at the angle on the passenger side, it obviously goes back quite a bit more. Um, so again, I don't really know if I... Just turned the camera off by mistake there, sorry. Uh, I don't know if I should be concerned with that. But... Uh, but looks centered up to me. Maybe, if anything, maybe a, 
And I don't know, that looks centered up, assuming there's a little bolt hole for the dashboard, assuming that's in the center of the scuttle. Uh, this, this, this boot lid's pretty centered. So, uh, jack the car, put it back on the dollies, move it around a little bit, get everything positioned for the sills, and uh, go from there. Like I said, it's noon, so maybe I'll get some welding in today. Pretty exciting. All right, getting pretty close, about 1 o'clock. Um, sill still needs to come back. A little ways. If you look at the put straight straight edge up there, you can see the gap. It's a good, you know, three millimeters, four millimeters there between where the um, edge of the bonnet comes down and where the the sill would should meet up. Um, smacking against the bulkhead there, and I'm also up against the um, rear wing there. So. Um, I don't have much more ability to move it back and forth so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do here but progress so we'll uh, keep banging around a little bit and, and see what we can see alright about 1.30 I think I got it um, Ellen had commented uh, yesterday I believe about a problem that he ran into with this front portion here um, raising up and down and affecting the back there um, so I, I watched that video again real quick and, and rehashed went over that um, so now I'm looking at essentially a straight line here between the bonnet gap and the sill where I was I will when I weld that in because I had it before um, and I gotta I gotta scooch that in back there I gotta tuck that underneath because um, that's not fitting up real well uh, the only other thing is in this area right here if you can see I'm gonna grab my light if you can see it kind of shrinks up there so you're going down looking good looking good looking good looking good and then it kind of shrinks up right there and then opens up again um, I'm not quite sure why that ha is happening so I gotta look at that too but uh, but I think I'm really really close so what I'm gonna do is pull the the sill off now get it prepped for uh, welding putting holes in it and uh, trying to get a final fit on it and then see if I can uh, see if I can get it tacked so wish me luck alright it's about quarter after two or so and I got the uh, sill prepped with a bunch of holes, uh, quarter inch holes this time, unlike the other one. If you remember, I put teeny tiny holes in it, and what was happening was that the holes were filling up with weld metal faster than penetration could happen. So I essentially wasted all my time punching all those holes, and I'll have to do it again. Um, and I primed the inside with weld through and cleaned up all the paint and everything uh, off the outside here along the holes. <coughs> So now I am going to put that puppy up here and go to town and try and get it fitted. And then uh, I've got some sheet metal screws like I had used for the cross members, the floor cross members. Got some of those standing by ready to go. And I'll, uh, once I'm happy with where everything is fitting up with the vice grips, then I'll screw it down so that I can um, have a little bit more capture and a little more closeness between the two pieces of metal. Then I think I'm going to pull the door off just for ease of access and then go to town.
I dare say, ladies and gentlemen, that I've got it. Um, so the biggest problem that I had, uh, if I didn't edit it out, you saw me grinding back in this area over here. Uh, this is where I kind of made my own little piece for that forward portion of the wing there that was all rusted away and cut away when I took the old sills out. The thing was in bad shape. Um, so it, I just needed to grind that a little bit to, to straighten it out and to provide some relief so that the sill could come back. Um, but happy about this gap here. This guy lines right up. Um, oops, sorry. So that touches essentially when I got the straight edge here, come up, come up the outline of the bonnet and come down and twist. It hits just right. Um, that gap there. What I'll do there is use the screws, the sheet metal screws, to get that gap even. Um, but I'm not going to stress too much over that one. Um, so this on your right there, that right portion, that top portion will come down a little bit. Um, so yeah, so it's, uh, it's sprung pretty good. I pressed down pretty hard on the inside of the door to get, to get these puppies in there. And you can, I don't know if you can see, but there is a slight rise in the center where it's still sprung. So I'll push down like a mother on that one too and uh, get that in there but I think we're we're pretty set um, the huge the huge amount of floor that sticks below the sill down there is a little disturbing um, so I don't I don't know maybe I'll sit a little lower in the car but uh, you know that I don't know what to do about that so um, grind it relatively smooth is, is pretty much all I'm going to do about it um, so there you go. So like I said, pretty happy. Uh, so what I want to do now is get the sheet metal screws in, um, get them lined up and, and ready to go in, and then I'm going to take it all back off, and then I think I'm going to try to seam seal it, and then put it back up. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to seam seal it, um, but, I, but I think it's a, probably a good idea. Uh, it's getting on about 3 o'clock, so I may not get to the welding today. Excuse me, depending on the seam sealer stuff and what decision I make there. So we'll we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm at final fit. I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or so sheet metal screws in there, and uh, it's pretty static. I'm happy with all the gaps. That uh, I'm happy with all the gaps. I'll leave it at that. Um, probably could do a little bit more here and there, but. But I think I would just uh, drive myself crazy. So um, definitely much better than I had started out with. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is take it back off. Check out the seam sealer deal. Uh, if I think I can do seam sealer on there, I got brushable stuff. So I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you that here in a second. If I think I can get the seam sealer on there and get it back on and get it tacked in, in about the next uh, hour or so, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So uh, keep them going. All right, well, unfortunately, um, the sill's not going to get in today. Um, because I want to use the seam sealer stuff, and I want to allow that to, um, I get about 15 minutes or so, according to the instructions, before that really starts to skim over and set up. I'm afraid to, like, seam seal it, put the thing up there, and only tack it in. I want to get it tight all the way around. So, um, the other thing that I forgot is down here, the um, strength that plate that goes underneath the, Outrigger there. I forgot to weld that into the body. Um, so I drilled two quick holes in the bottom of the A-post there, and I'm just going to tack that. Um, again, not, I don't know really how to do those that well since I've taken them off. But uh, that's, that's the best solution that I have for now. At least they'll keep them steady, I hope. So when I take the car back apart and flip it over, I'll be able to run a bead on that thing into the floor. So I'm going to do that. And, uh, and essentially that's going to be it for the day. Because, like I said, I don't want the seam sealer to sit in there and not be uh, tight up with the panel. So, um, I'll get to that real quick and then I'll close it out for the day. Alright, it's about 4 o'clock. Time to wrap it up. Uh, I, I said I would show you the seam sealer. This is the Evercoat brushable seam sealer. Um, says on the back that it 
uh, will retain brush marks for a factory type finish so it's obviously aimed at, at a restoration thing like this vice just uh, you know somebody looking for more gunk to keep the water out um, so because that sets up relatively quickly I don't want to put it on there and not get not have the time to fully weld the thing in um, and the snow is coming and it's starting to get a little late dinner time approaches and all that kind of good stuff so anyway um, so not not too bad day I'm happy with all my gaps uh, I have that one concern that I showed you earlier where towards the uh, front of the door but uh, I'm just gonna kind of fight through that um, I did get those two little welds in like you saw and uh, otherwise the next visit I will throw that sill up there uh, get it screwed down with the machine screws get it all realigned uh, another reason for the machine screws is to help me remember where the alignment was um, and then uh, and then go to town one thing that I took a, a still image of but I didn't uh, capture was the spot welds here you can see where I drew the little swirls where I drilled up the spot welds off the old sill uh, I put the new sill up and got it all aligned and everything like that and then finally raised the bonnet to put the uh, sheet metal screws in and one of the holes was perfectly aligned with the swirl of the um, of the spot weld so that kind of made me feel good uh, um, you know re, re, redoing it in the, in the proper position so we'll see anyway uh, that's all I got for today uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend if you have like I had mentioned the other day if you have a three or four day weekend enjoy that my behind will be at work on Monday unfortunately uh, but the boys get to stay home so they're rubbing it in already Otherwise, please visit the website, www.roundtailrestoration.com. I'll probably get this written up either tonight or tomorrow, since I'll be snowed in for a little bit, and uh, go about that. Uh, please continue to like my uh, YouTube videos if you, if you care to like them, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so. Um, the 20th, I think, is the, when I turn into a pumpkin, so uh, like I said, regardless if I make the subscriptions for monetization or not, I'm still going to be putting out videos if for nothing else it helps me talk through things and uh, figure out what's next and sometimes talking it through makes me change my direction so um, it, and it's cathartic if nothing else so have a good like I said have a good rest of your weekend uh, be safe if you get snowed on and uh, that's about it cheers